Hey, everybody, welcome. Um, we are going to start with a short pranayama breathing technique that could be loosely described as a meditation. It's going to take about three minutes. The purpose of it is to reduce anxiety, calm the monkey mind, um, find that place that it's inside of all of us. There is a peaceful place inside of all of us. Now sitting may not feel very peaceful, and if that's the case, there are chairs and uh, people at home, you know, a firm chair is great and the soles of your feet should be flat on the floor. Now, when we do sit, we want to relax our shoulders. Let the crown of your head float up. Separate the biting surfaces of the teeth. Relax the jaw. And just let your chin fall slightly towards the notch in your neck to lengthen the back of your neck. And just spend a moment connecting with your breath. The breath is the key that unlocks and opens your nerves. Things shut down. Things don't work when we don't breathe fully and deeply. So become aware of your belly as you breathe in. Let it soften. And as you breathe out, pull your belly towards your spine. And then watch how the breath becomes invited back in, filling you up. And as you exhale, pull your belly once again towards your spine. This creates a vacuum as you inhale. And again, exhale. Alrighty, so sitting up tall, just open your eyes for a minute. This is going to be our hand mudra. So your hands are going to be flat. You're going to place one hand on top of the other. It does not matter which hand you place on top of. Just go for it. And then the hand that's underneath, take that thumb and just place it inside the palm. And then the other thumb on top of, okay? So hands are flat, one palm on top of the other, thumb in, and the other thumb on top. And then bring it just a few inches, your hand just a few inches away from your heart center. Now we're gonna do this short pranayama meditation. It's really simple. When you inhale through your mouth, which you will, I want you to imagine you're taking the air in through a straw. Okay, so just inhale through the mouth as if you were sucking on a straw, breathing, taking in liquid air in this case. And when you exhale through your mouth, just let it go. Alrighty? So relax your shoulders, <laughs> lengthen your spine, sitting up tall, not too tight, not too loose. And inhale through your nose. And exhale through your nose. Inhale through your mouth, through the straw. Exhale through your mouth, just let it go. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth, just let your jaw drop. And then inhale through your mouth. This is like a straw. And exhale through your nose. That's one round. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your nose. Inhale through the straw, your mouth. Exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. 
Inhale through your mouth. Exhale through your nose. One more round together. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your nose. Inhale through the straw of your mouth. Exhale through your mouth. <coughs> Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your mouth straw. And exhale through your nose. Drop your hands to your lap, keep your eyes closed. Just become aware of your breathing in. You can repeat this sequence if you like. Or you can practice the idea of inhaling so, which you'll feel even if you're breathing through your nose or your mouth, so on the inhale. And hum on the exhale. Checking in with your shoulders, letting them relax. Eyes do not have to be tightly closed. You might have them slightly open to let a little bit of light in. And then bring your hands together into prayer on Jolly Mudra. Keeping your eyes closed, rub your palms together vigorously, generating heat and warmth. And then cup them over your eyes and bathe this in the blue, black warmth of your hands, which are extensions of your heart. And then wash the side of your face. And open your eyes. So we're going to start on our backs. We're going to check in with how our backs are doing. Keep your knees bent. Feet flat on the floor. <coughs> Have your spine neutral, which means your lower back is neither pressing into the floor nor arcing up. Have your palms facing up in an open and receiving position. And breathe. Inhaling in, now arc your back. And exhaling, press the small of your back into the floor, pulling your belly in towards your spine. Inhale, <coughs> arc your back. Exhale, press your lower back into the floor. Keep your lower back into the floor. Be sure that your heels are now lining up with your sits bones so your feet are not too wide apart and your toes are pointing towards the front or the end of your mat. Exhaling, press the small of your back into the floor. Inhaling, release the lower back. And exhale and peel your spine off the floor, lifting your hips, activating your thighs. Go 
compressing in the throat area. Jalandra Bandha, the lock in the throat, helps to release impurities or blocked where we feel we can't speak our truth and slowly release one vertebra at a time, bringing your spine back down onto your mats. Inhaling to press your tailbone into the floor, arcing your back. Exhaling, rocking on your sacrum to press your lower back, your lumbar spine into the floor. Activate your thighs to lift your tummy, your butt, your hips, your lower back off the floor. Taking a bit of a back bend here. Breathing in. On an exhale, slowly release, coming all the way back down. Releasing the lower back. Last time, press the tailbone into the floor. <clears throat> So you're rolling on your sacrum, you're creating a big space underneath the lower lumbar back, and then roll on the sacrum to press the small of the back into the floor and peel your spine off the floor. If you can, take straight arms under your body, interlock your fingers so that your knuckles are pointing towards your heels, you may want to bring your feet a little closer in, if that would feel better to you, holding in this space. So back bends get into the kidneys and the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands release cortisol and adrenaline. Both of these hormones are great up to a point. They both fuel the muscles and the brain. Cortisol releases glucose, which the brain and muscles need for fuel, and adrenaline helps drive the glucose into the head region and into the muscles when we need it. And then release your arms and slowly lower your torso back onto your mat. Bring your knees up in towards your chest, one hand on each knee, Take your knees a little bit wider apart and gently rock from side to side. There's no doubt about it that there's more stress. Everyone's feeling more stress after what we've been through. Many things have become more difficult, if not more expensive, getting things done. So if you are feeling more stress in your life, that's just normal, absolutely normal after what we've been through. However, we want to mitigate and manage our stress. Extend your right leg straight down in front, pardon me, your left leg down in front, keep your right leg bent and interlock your fingers two inches below the knee and pull that thigh in towards your chest with the knee coming towards your armpit. And now with your right hand inside of your right knee, press that knee over to the side with your left hand on your left thigh to keep it flat. So you're not rolling over, you're just opening up the lower abdominal region. And then inhale and bring the knee back to center and now place your left hand on the outside of your right knee and take it across your body to whatever point you can, creating a good stretch through the hip and the glutes, your IT band, and breathe into that area. There are actually three kinds of stress. There's acute stress, which is perhaps a near miss when you're driving the car, or just something, it, listen, it can be your telephone ringing when you're deep in thought or an alarm going off on your telephone or 
So that's an acute stress. Episodic stress, healthcare workers have been through that. It's the chronic stress that's daily, that keeps us awake at night. This can wreak havoc with our health. You may have noticed that it's easier to release stress from the body than it is from the mind. Inhale, bring that knee back to center. Once again, hug it into your chest this time and then reach towards your ankles. Interlock your fingers around the ankle or the calf. Do not hyperextend that leg, so keep a soft bend in the knee. Or you can straighten that leg, but try not to press your knee backwards. That's what hyperextending means. Inhaling in place. Exhale, lift your head off the floor, your shoulders, and pull your nose or your chin towards your knee or your shin. And release the top of your head back down, and then slowly lower the leg, using your muscles and not gravity. This activates your hip flexors, which helps us walk upstairs, get in and out of a chair, inhaling in place, exhale, bend the left knee, interlock the fingers two inches below the knee. Again, try to avoid your rib cage here by pressing, pointing the knee towards your armpit, but do pull down. And then with your left hand inside of your left knee, your right hand on your right thigh and hip flexor, you're going to open your left knee to the left side. So you're opening and stretching the inner thigh adductor muscle. The antidote to when we feel overwhelmed or on a treadmill or a hamster wheel is to get off it. And the easiest way to get off it is to sit and ground yourself, whether it's a park bench, whether it's in a comfortable place in your home, inhale, bring that knee back to center. And then with your right hand on the outside of your left knee, bring it across your body and extend your left arm out to the side. So now we're at a time of the year, the season, where there's greater prana in the air, energy, winter, lack of sunlight, can be very, it's mildly depressing and it can be extremely depressing for some of us. But we're on the other side of that now, so, Self-care, exercise is number one. A good, healthy, nutritious diet is number two. And that includes hydration. So if you don't like drinking water as much, and I get it that some people don't, um, putting lemon, a fresh lemon juice into your water improves penetration of liquid into your cells and also improves the release of waste from your cells. Eating watery fruits, I think you know what they are. Watery vegetables, you know what they are. That's super important, hydration. Inhale, bring the leg back to the center. Interlock your fingers once again around the shin, pulling in nice and tight. So this gets into your descending colon. We took care of the ascending a moment ago. And then reach your hands up towards your ankle. And inhaling in place, exhale, lift your head, neck and shoulders off the floor and pull your leg towards you.
and release the upper body back to the floor. Now let's lift the other leg straight up and let's just make circles with our ankles and pointing. Do whatever you like here. If you spend a lot of time on your feet, some people do in their jobs, or sometimes we just spend a lot of time sitting. Well, blood pools in the ankle area. Also too, our joints need lubricating. It's not different than a car. If you don't drive a car for a while, the brake sees, the ball joint sees, goes on and on. Um, it's just really important. And the thing about yoga is that it works so many more parts of the body than other forms of exercise. So doing your yoga once a week is like getting an oil and lube job once a week, which we don't have to do that often for our vehicles, thank God. Alrighty, and then lower your legs back down onto the floor. Place your left ankle on your right knee. Now, we're not doing thread the needle yet, so please listen carefully. You're gonna take your left hand to the outside of your left knee. You're gonna bring the right knee towards you and you're just gonna place your both hands on your left knee and ankle. And then I want you to bring the knee towards the center of your body, okay? So your hands, your left hand is at your left knee on the outside. Your right hand is around or near the ankle of the left leg and the right knee is bent, but you're bringing with the force of the right bent knee, you're bringing this close to your chest, but I want you to bring the knee towards the center of your body. So when it comes to joints in the body, there are hinge joints, which is our knee. There are ball and socket joints. Your hip is a ball and socket joint. So we're kind of working the ball in that joint and it's tendons and ligaments that support the joints. And of course the cartilage between the bones, which helps to uh, move the synovial fluid around the joints is how it all works smoothly. Now, clearly you'll be feeling a real stretch here. If you brought your knee towards the center of your body, then you're going to feel the ball and socket joint of the hip. So the knee needs to be to the center of the body. The knee is not off to the side. The Left knee is towards the center of your body. Okay. And slowly lower the right foot back to the floor and take the left foot now down to the floor. Now you're gonna place your right ankle on your left knee. You're going to place your right hand on the outside of your right knee and then with your left leg bent you're bringing the whole lower part of your leg towards you so that your right hand can reach towards your right ankle so left hand outside of or pardon me right hand is on your right knee the left hand is on your right ankle but it's your left bent knee that is drawing your right bent leg towards and then bring that knee towards the center of your chest. So when you bring your knee, your right knee towards the center of your chest, you should be feeling this in the ball joint of the hip. Breathe into it, please don't do too much. Don't do too little. Make sure you're breathing into the place that feels the tightness, the tension. You can always mentally ask a part of your body to relax, to let go. Okay, 
Lower your left foot back down onto the floor and then your right foot onto the floor. Okay, draw your knees up in towards your hip, uh, your chest, both knees are together, arms are shoulder height out to the side. Press the small of your back into the floor so that you feel your abdominal muscles engaging. Your legs should be at right angles to your body and the bottom part of your leg right angles to the top part. Inhaling in place, arms or shoulder height. Exhale, keep your knees, feet and thighs together as you lower them over towards the left and your head to the right. And keep your right shoulder on the mat. So twisting and warming up the lower spine and activating the shoulder joint on the right side. And as you slowly inhale, you also activate your core torso muscles. Inhaling, coming back to the center. Exhaling, both knees over to the right, head to the left, left shoulder stays on the mat. You may feel this through your pectoral <laughs> muscles. So this is chest to shoulder muscles, your pectorals. Inhaling, slowly coming back to center. If you're going quickly, you will not feel your abdominal muscles engage. So slow everything down and exhale, both knees once again, and everything is glued together, the thighs, the knees, the ankles, the sides of your feet, as you slowly release your knees to the left, your head to the right, probably going a little bit further this time, mobilizing the lower back, activating the core, and stretching through the shoulder, armpit, chest area. Inhaling, back to center. Exhaling, last time, both knees to the right, head to the left, left shoulder stays on the mat, doesn't matter if your knees are going all the way down or not, it's not the point, but notice if there's a difference from the first time, did you get a little further? Inhaling, come back to center. Exhale, bring your soles of your feet to the floor and your arms beside your body with your palms facing down. Lift your shoulder blades up and tuck them under. We'll do our thread the needle now, so we'll be really nice and limber for our sun salutations. Place your left ankle on top of your right knee. Left ankle on right knee. And you're gonna draw your right knee towards you as you thread the left hand through your legs and the right goes around the outside of that right leg. And you're interlocking your fingers behind your right knee. Now, some of us may be able to bring the fingers around to the front of the shin of the right knee. But we're only going to do that as long as we can keep the shoulder blades and the head on the floor. And then there's a tendency for the sacrum and the tailbone to come off the floor at this point. If you can, press your sacrum a little more into the floor. Pressing your tailbone towards the end of your mat. So now you can feel a different part, different ligaments and tendons and muscles working from the ball joint of your hip in this thread the needle. And just in general, of course, these are what are known as hip openers. 
the hip is joint is the largest and most stable. But remember, in our last session, we talked about moving the body in six different planes. Most of our days are spent in two planes. Bless you. Pressing your tailbone, a little more, maybe lifting up in the small of the back, just a little more. All right. And now cross that top leg right over that other knee. Take your arms out to the side and let's gently release both knees over to the right side. So a nice gentle overall stretch now for the hip, the thigh, the IT band, and your glutes. Inhaling, come back to center. Exhale, both knees over to the other side. With the knees crossed tightly. Breathing into the front of that ball joint, ball and socket joint of the hip. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, uncross that leg, placing the left sole of the foot on the floor. And now bring your right ankle onto your left knee. And you press that right knee away from you. So your right ankle is on your left knee. Or if you did it the other way around, you're on the other side. And then bring the left bent knee towards you as you thread your right hand through your legs and your left around the outside of your left. Interlock your fingers two inches below or just behind the back of your knee. And depending on your anatomy, you might be able to interlock the fingers around the front of your knee whilst keeping your shoulders and your head on the floor. You want enough stress and you stress, E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S, -E -S -S, good stress. And of course, we have good stress, which motivates us. It helps us grow. So public speaking could be considered you stress, taking on a new project at work, or, well, let's face it, because tech guy is going to be away, I have what yesterday I was processing as bad stress, and today <laughs> it's good stress. I'm learning to be more self-reliant, which makes me think of Emerson who I'm, I have several of his books, Ralph Waldo Emerson, on my bookshelf, and it was what I read before I went to bed last night. He writes essays on self-reliance, and of course, when we're more self-reliant, we're not looking around feeling helpless and hopeless, even though these are absolutely normal feelings. And now pressing your tailbone, your sacrum, into the floor. So you're feeling a little more full. Stretching, lengthening, warming, just activating ligaments and tendons that support the joints of the body that attach to the muscles. The body is a wondrous machine and the more we understand it, know about it, the better able 
and perhaps more motivated we would be to take care of it. Okay. And then cross that top leg over as if you were wearing a tight skirt and take your arms out to the side and exhale, releasing both knees over to the left. Just letting go here. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, both knees over to the right. Inhale, back to center. And now, uncross the legs. Place your feet with the knees bent on the edges of your mat. And if you find yourself off your mat, like I just did, scoot yourself back into the center. I didn't even know I was off my mat. Alrighty, so your feet are on the edges of your mat, and you're going to let both knees fall over to the left. Both knees fall over to the left. You're stretching the IT band here. And when the IT band is tight, the thighs, the muscles underneath that remain tight. Inhale, come back to center. Getting a massage typically loosens the fascia. And exhale, both knees, keeping the feet static. In one position, you're not moving the feet, and now pressing both knees over to the right. Inhaling, back to center. One more time, taking both knees over to the left, lifting up the left ankle or foot and placing it on top of the right knee. Breathing, I'm just going to close this door. Inhaling, come back to center. Exhaling, your feet stay at the width of your mat. <laughs> and lower them both now over to the right side. And pick up your right ankle and place it on top of your knee. So your iliotibia band, it goes to the tibia, which is a bone in the lower part of the leg, and from your ilium, from your hip. So clearly when this is stretched, we have more freedom in the quads, your quadricep, your front thigh muscles, and more freedom in the hip and the knee area. Often it's not the joints, well, the, the joints can be tight or underused, but often it's the tendons and the ligaments and the muscles that are tight so that the joints can't do what they are designed to do when these areas are tight or blocked. Inhaling, back to center, and now bring your hands underneath the backs of your thighs. If it's okay with you, to roll up into sitting or roll over onto your side. Come on, into all fours. Or in the cow. So hopefully, I know you're probably feeling something through your hips at this time because they're awake. They may have been asleep, a little bit even numb. Okay, so your hands are underneath your shoulders and your knees are underneath your hips. Exhale, round your spine. Tuck your chin, drop your tail, pull your bellies in. Inhaling, curl your toes under again. Let this start with your tailbone. So your tail lifts, hollow out your lower back, lengthen through the front of your chest, Lifting and lengthening through your neck. Exhale. 
Again, starting from your tail, rounding your spine, tuck your chin, pull your bellies in. Don't hold back here. Curl your toes under, start with your tailbone, lift it up, hollow out your lower back. Draw your heart center forward as you lengthen, mobilizing your spine. Flatten the tops of your feet, start with your tailbone, drop it. Raise your spine, ground it a lot, pull your bellies in, tuck your chin. And last time, pull your toes under, lifting your tail, hollow out your lower back. Lifting through your heart center, with your neck and your head, and come back to neutral. Keep your toes curled under, and then lift your knees off the floor. Activating your core. Breathing, pressing all 10 fingers into the mat. So it's kind of a doggy kind of push up. And then release your knees to the floor. Take your knees as wide as your mat, flatten the tops of your feet, Bring your big toes together. Your knees are as wide as your mat. Slowly take your hips back towards your heels. Stretching your arms out in front, releasing your torso between your thighs and your forehead onto the mat. Now, if your knees are not happy bent this much, then you're coming into puppy pose with your knees underneath your hips, your bum up in the air, and your forehead on the mat in either position if you wish to add height if your block is handy you can place it under your forehead or you can fold your arms and make a pillow but eventually we hope that you can get your forehead onto the floor Stimulating your pineal gland. Inhaling. Draw your knees underneath your hips, curl your toes under and come up into a soft dog. If your hands feel too far away from your feet to walk your dog, then draw your hands or your feet closer. So one leg bent, one leg straight. If you press all your fingers into the mat, you can activate more of your wrist and forearm muscles. So slowly, feeling, practicing with mindfulness, Noticing what you're stretching, in this case, one leg straight, stretching the ligaments and tendons in the back of the knee. Also stretching the Achilles tendon and then change. Stretching the fascia on the bottom of your feet. Bringing extra blood flow into the upper part of your body. Anything lower than the heart is going to get more blood circulation. So in this case, the head, the neck, the throat. And one more changing. Relax your neck. And then come into neutral and walk your hands back towards your feet. Keep your knees soft. And if it's okay, just let your upper body hang in Uttanasana. Let your head hang. Feel your belly on your thighs. Give your head a little bit of a shake. And then pressing the soles of your feet into the floor. Feet are parallel to one another. Slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Keeping your chin tucked into your chest. And let your head be the last thing to come up. All right. Bring your feet close together with the outsides of your feet parallel to the outsides of your mat. 
and lift your left shoulder up to your ear. Exhale and roll it back. Inhale the other shoulder up to your ear. Exhale, roll it back. One more time, one shoulder at a time. Notice if there's any kind of tightness, stiffness, lifting it up. And we don't roll forward because we're often in forward. So that's why we're doing backwards. Alrighty, inhale, sweep the arms up over the head, interlock your fingers and then release the pointers like a church steeple. And bring your arms right beside your ears and straighten your arms as much as you're able. Inhale, lifting up out of your waist. Exhale, let's bend to the right sideways. Now don't worry about how far you go. What's important here is that sometimes we're not able to breathe as well as we would like to because our rib cage, our intercostal muscles are tight. Inhale, reaching up. So we're stretching those out and of course mobilizing the spine in sideways movement, something we don't often do every day. Inhale, reaching up. And now I'm turning sideways. I'm going to drop my head back, bring my arms beside my ears, whatever amount, stretching out the front of the body. And then in releasing your arms, exhale, swan dive forward. Keep your knees bent here. Now make sure that your feet are pointing towards the front of your mat. So they're parallel to one another and your toes are pointing towards the mat. We're gonna come into horseman's pose. Inhale, now let your weight shift into your heels. Keep your knees bent. Stay in a squat position. Arms can be shoulder height, this height. Exhale, forward fold. Let your hands hang. One more time. Inhale, Uttkatasana, chair pose, horseman's pose. So your weight is in your heels. Your knees are behind your toes. So look down if they're not. You might feel like you're gonna slightly fall backwards, but don't do that. And then exhale, forward fold. Let your hands hang. And then slowly roll up, letting your arms hang like a raggedy Ann or Andy doll, keeping your chin tucked into your chest and let your head be the last thing to come up. And then inhale, shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, roll them back. Interlock your fingers behind your back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. And breathe, taking a deep breath. Exhale, release the arm, shake out. If you need, take a sip of water. We're gonna come up to the front of the mat. Sun salutations. How's everyone's back feeling? A little more expanded, a little more open. Okay. Coming up to the front of your mat. Inhaling in place. Exhale. Hands in prayer. Step your feet apart. Arms up. Reach up. Look up and arc back. <coughs> Inhale, bring your feet back together. Lift up out of your waist. Bend from your hips. Reach forward as you fold. Fingertips to the floor and let your head hang. Step your left leg back and drop your knee to the mat. Bring your hands onto your front thigh. Focus your gaze for balance. Lifting the back knee off the floor. Press through your back heel. Inhale and sweep the arms up. Shoulders stay relaxed but active. Fingers are active. Pressing through that back foot, you stretch the sole of your foot. Activate the joints in the toes. Turn your hands forward, spread your fingers apart. Bring that other leg back. Come into your push-up or plank position. Now, if this is too much for the wrist, release the knees. Cross the feet at the ankles. <clears throat> Whenever we're putting pressure on our hands and wrists and forearms, press all 10 fingers into the mat a lot and breathe. Strengthening the core and the upper body. The more we practice these 
strength building postures, the stronger we get and the easier the posture gets. Then release your knees, flatten the tops of your feet, leave your hands where they are, take your hips back towards your heels, stretch your spine, stretch through your shoulders and then release your forearms and elbows and slowly come forward, releasing your chest and chin onto your mat. Awkward, but hugely important and beneficial posture for spine, adrenals, kidneys. Slide everything out behind you. Align your fingertips with your shoulders. Place your forehead on the mat. Elbows come into your rib cage. Move the shoulders away from your ears and then release your forearms as close to the floor as you can. Have your toes pointing towards the back of your mat so the tops of your feet are flat on your mat. Roll an invisible alley with your nose to lengthen through the neck area. On an inhale, without using your hands to press you up, use your muscles, keep your elbows tucked in, coming up into baby cobra. One more breath in to lift. Exhale to lengthen and lower. Curl your toes under. Press into your hands, lift your hips up, walk your feet a couple of inches forward, then bend your knees, press your belly onto your thighs, press your chest towards your knees and release your ears to coincide with your inner arms. Pressing all 10 fingers into the mat, press your sits bones towards the back of your mat. Even before you bend your legs, press your sits bones backwards. And now, press your heels towards the floor. Distributing evenly the weight between the front top of your body and the lower part of your body. Lift your left leg up in the air and look at your left hand. Swing that foot as far forward as you can. Other leg comes forward. Let your head hang. Arms beside your ears. Lift up on your kneecaps to activate your thighs. Pull your bellies in to protect your spine. Inhale, sweep the arms in front. Feet apart. Reaching up, arcing back. Inhale, feet come back together. Lift up out of your waist. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Hands in prayer. Exhale, hands to heart. And release your arms down. Staying at the front of your mat, step your right leg back one leg length. Bend your front knee. Look to see your big toe inside of your knee. So you're pressing into the outside of your foot in the front and you're pressing into the outside of the foot in the back. Inhale, sweep the arms up to shoulder height. Maintain pressing into the outside of your back foot. This is the anchor of your posture. Fix your gaze over your front fingertips. Feel your inner thigh adductor muscles being activated. Lower your shoulders and lengthen your neck. Now inhale and straighten that front leg. Take your left, your right hip, press it backwards as you reach forward. So your back hip literally goes backwards as your front arm goes forward. And you're keeping your front leg straight. You're not bending it. Then lower your front arm inside of your front leg and your top arm directly above and you're reaching up. Both palms are facing in the direction of your nose. Your front leg is straight.
Keep pressing the top shoulder back. Inhale, come back into warrior two. Bending your front knee, lower your back arm, down your back leg, and reach that top arm straight up. Looking up, reaching up, and stretching up. And once again, coming back into warrior two. And now release your front forearm onto your front thigh. Take your back arm down, around, and bring it right over top of your ear, right over top of your ear. And then stretch, reaching the palm forward over the front of your mat. Feel that stretch along the side of your body from the outside of your back foot, right through the fingertips in your top arm. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, lower the arms, bring your legs together and give your legs a good shake up. Let's do the other side. Stepping your left leg back, one leg length. So your front foot is 90 degrees, your back foot about 60 degrees forward. Bend that front knee, look down and see your big toe inside of your knee. Knee wants to collapse. Press it open. Now press into the outside of your back foot. Keep your shoulders right over your hips. Inhale, sweep the arms up, and you're looking over your front arm. Yep. You might want to check your back arm. Sometimes it's lower. And you're fixing your gaze over your front fingertips. Lower your shoulders, lengthen your neck, and stretch. Inhale, straighten your front leg, and you're going to keep it straight. Now, <coughs> let your back hip go backwards, okay? Your hip should be nice and loose. We did all of that nice warm-up, so let that hip go backwards as you reach forward. Now, when you can't reach forward any further, hinge and let your front arm fall inside of your front leg. Don't worry about how low it goes. Be more interested in how high you can reach your top arm up and how much you can keep your top shoulder in line with your bottom shoulder. So straight, front leg stays straight everybody. Straighten your front leg and then come up a bit, Jimmy. Yeah. And then this is shoulder, is that, that's your back shoulder? Yeah. Okay. So just lay that <coughs> yeah, inside, but your palm faces that way. Yeah and you're lifting your top arm, looks good. Okay, inhale, come on up into warrior two, bend that front knee, lower your back arm, down your back leg, and again, energy up. Reaching up, stretching up, stretching those intercostal muscles so we can take in all the new fresh prana in the air. Although the trees haven't got leaves yet, so enjoy the naked trees while you can. They're so pretty. Some people have lit up their beautiful trees at nighttime. That's what I do a lot of my walking. Okay, and then come back into warrior two, and then we'll come into side angle pose, Parjvokanasana. So bring your front uh, forearm onto your front thigh. Take your back arm down around and bring it up and over your ear. So you're blossoming your heart out to the side, reaching and stretching. Palm faces the floor. So the palm comes towards me, Inga. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, inhale. Come on all the way up. Stay sideways on your mats. Take your arms out to shoulder height. Okay. So your arms are shoulder height. <coughs> now fold from your hips. <laughs> Just halfway, tabletop your spine. Tent your fingers below your face. Inhale, sweep the left arm up, reaching up, stretching up, looking up. You're gonna feel this in your inner thigh, adductor muscle. Exhale, float it down. Inhale, sweep the other arm up, reaching up, stretching up, feeling this in the opposite inner thigh. 
exhale, float it down. Now take note of what your feet are doing right now. Are they collapsing at your arches or are you pressing into the outside of your feet? This is something I want us to become aware of, is lifting up the arches. And we can do that by pressing into the outside of our feet. Obviously, we don't overdo it. And now exhale. Let's lunge to the right side, bringing your hips close to your heels as much as you can. If your feet aren't wide enough apart, this can be difficult. And then up and over to the other side. And into the center. And then walk your feet together. And you're going to bring yourself down on your mats. Now, I did put, I'd like you to cover up your eyes. There should be enough iPads here for everyone. not wrong. You know, when we let go of making things something other than what they really are, we can get into deeper water than we need to or want to, I suppose. And the idea of just taking time out to ground ourselves. The earth has an energy. The earth gives birth to all living things. And the earth receives all living things. When we're feeling overwhelmed, stress, anxiety, depression, know that these are feelings, they're emotions, they have movement. We can support them moving along or we can support them to stay with us. There's always a choice. And the conscious mind cannot hold two thoughts at the same time. And in order for us to be clear, awareness is the first step to managing, coping, existing with the stuff that's hard. The judgments. And it's interesting when we talk about being judgmental or critical, even let's start with ourselves. We're really criticizing what's unique and different about us that makes us, I don't like the word special because it's being overused today, but it makes us unique. There's no perfect person. 
And perfection is a moving target. If you think, oh, if I have this or do this or look like this, now I'm perfect. No, that's not going to happen. So just see some of our foibles, even, even our anxiety. See it as something that wants us to grow. Allowing ourselves to feel takes courage. It takes fortitude. Lots of people numb themselves out, distract. We all do it, you know, whether it's food, television, shopping, stuff. Awareness is the foundation for appreciating life. And we are most aware when we're living in the moment. My, one of my favorite expressions, and many of you have heard it before. I asked for all things so I could enjoy life. Instead, I got life so I could enjoy all things. So let's not be hard on ourselves or make things any harder than they already are. Times have been tough. But by breathing fully and exhaling completely, our brain cells, our nerves, our arteries, our veins, our muscles, everything gets more of what it needs to help us be more of who we really, truly are. We're not our emotions. We're not our thoughts. We are miracles of love, curiosity, infinite potential, wonder. In one word, splendid, absolutely splendid. So inhale the life force, long, <laughs> full, and deep. And deep, exhaling through your mouth. Inhaling through your nose. Exhaling through your mouth or your nose. Inhale, stretch your arms over behind your heads. Reach and stretch. Point feet far. Flex and point and drop your arms down by your side. Inhale, stretch your arms skybound, reach and stretch, point feet far, flex and point, and drop your arms down by your side. Stay as you are for as long as you like. Or roll over onto your side and spend a moment in a semi-fetal position. Acknowledge yourself for exercising, for showing up, for loving yourself, for caring. May you take this energy with you today. Have a beautiful one. Namaste. Any questions or comments?